so hello guys welcome to a new session on nist 853 uh, here we will discuss about uh, this particular publication from nist right so nist is national institute of uh, security and technology and uh, it has released this revision 5 of 853 and the full name of this particular NIST 853 is Security and Privacy Controls for Information Systems and Organizations. So it's basically for the security, security in the sense, the security controls such as uh, IDS, IPS systems, firewalls, and privacy controls. So privacy is mostly associated with the personal information of the individuals uh, it can be uh, you know some kind of an information which is associated with a particular natural person and that information can be used to identify directly or indirectly that particular natural person uh, you might have heard about the dr uh, data protection act of india so we have a lot of uh, regulations uh, regarding privacy internationally right now this particular standard right this nist standard this is a framework which organizations can use to you know to implement certain controls to do risk management for a lot of different activities and uh, you know, first of all, we will discuss about uh, we will discuss about the table of content. So, what is there in the table of content of uh, this particular standard? So, we have introduction, uh, purpose and applicability, target audience, organizational responsibilities. And uh, you know, then th there is chapter two, that is the fundamentals, requirement and controls, controls structure and organization. So how could be the structure of the particular control? Control implementation approaches. We have you know a lot of controls, and we need to basically be a have an implementation approach. Security and privacy controls, right? Then we have chapter three. In this, we have all the controls such as access control, awareness and training, audit and accountability, assessment, optimization and monitoring, configuration management, contingency planning. So, incident response. So these might be, you know, if you are new to this particular field into the governance, risk, and compliance, and IT audit, uh, this might be a little bit, uh, you know, kind of a jargon. But we will discuss uh, all the topics and uh, we will have a clear understanding of how exactly these uh, controls work, right, in an organization. Now, let's, uh, so the, there are a lot of revisions of this particular, you know, in the list 853. And uh, now let's talk about the purpose and applicability so the publication of the establishes uh, controls for systems and organizations so this particular publication is for systems and organizations the control can be implemented within any organization or system right it can be implemented to all the organization whether it be a retail company it can be a healthcare organization it can be any kind of organization that is processing information right that is storing the information, that is transferring the information, right? So whoever is doing that can use this particular NIST 853. The use of these controls is mandatory. So the controls that are listed here are basically mandatory for federal information systems in accordance with the Office of Management and Budget Circular. So there is a particular circular there is a provisions in FISMA that is Federal Information Security Modernization Act. And as for that, now whatever is, is listed 
whatever is there in the nest is mandatory for them for the federal of federal agencies right for the federal organizations federal information systems right this publication along with uh, other uh, supporting nest publications is designed to help organizations identify security and privacy controls needed to manage risk and to satisfy security and privacy requirements in FISMA, the Privacy Act of 1974, OMB policies and designated federal information processing standards, among others. It accomplishes this objective by providing a comprehensive and flexible catalog of security and privacy controls to meet current and future protection needs based on the threats. So there are a lot of threats, right? It can be a DOS attack, DDoS attack, it can be a theft or a cyber attack or a phishing email, right? And vulnerabilities such as you don't have the antivirus, your passwords are very weak, uh, or you know, there are a lot of vulnerabilities. There is an open door, right? Whenever someone asks me what is vulnerability, I say that it's a weakness in, the, in your system that threat can exploit, right? And which will amount to uh, of one, amount to risk. The publication also improves communication among the organization by providing a common lexicon that supports the discussion of security, privacy, and risk management concepts. Right. So these are the target audience uh, that NIST has gave us. Basically, finally, the controls are independent of the process employed. So all the controls that are listed in NIST 853. Uh, are independent of the process employed to select those controls. The control selection process can be part of an organization's wide risk management process. So whatever controls the organization is selecting is as per their wider risk management process, right? The process they are following the same, uh, that will purely impact the control selection process. The risk management framework, the cybersecurity framework, and the privacy framework. The control selection criteria can be guided and informed by many factors, including mission, business needs, what is the mission of the organization. This will impact this control selection, right? What is the business need? Stakeholder protection needs, threats, vulnerabilities, and requirement to comply with federal laws, whether it be GDPR or any other federal law. If we need to comply with it, sometimes the organization will submit the controls, right? Now, the combination of a catalog of security and privacy controls and a risk-based control selection process can help organization comply with stated security and privacy requirements, obtain adequate security for their information systems and protect the privacy of the individuals, okay? Organizational responsibilities. Managing security and privacy risk is a complex and multifaceted undertaking that requires well defined security and privacy requirement for systems in organization. The use of trustworthy information systems, components based on the state. So these uh, are basically the organizational responsibilities, right? Now, let us uh, what do you want to discuss about now? Let's discuss about the you know requirement and the controls. It's important to understand the relationship between requirement for federal information security and privacy policies. The term requirement is generally used to refer to the information security and privacy obligation imposed on the organization. So, whenever the federal you know, for information security and privacy policies are concerned. The term requirement that is used in the in in, in the federal information system privacy policies or security policies are mostly referred to as information security and privacy obligation imposed on the organization. For example, OMB imposes information security privacy requirements with which federal agencies must comply when managing information resources. Right? Stakeholder, stakeholder 
protection needs and corresponding security and privacy requirements may be derived from many sources laws executive orders directives regulations policy standards mission and business names right organizations may divide security and privacy requirements into more granular categories depending on where the requirements are employed in the system development life cycle as dlc organization may use the term capability requirement to determine a capability of that system as provide to satisfy a stakeholder protection need so capability is mostly associated with uh, with, with what kind of uh, uh, you know is that particular system capable of doing uh, a particular thing that is assigned to it such as you know uh, reducing the risk or reducing the you know the reducing the likelihood okay so this capability can, can be can 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 be used right for this uh, for, for whether the control or uh, you know is able to satisfy the stakeholders uh, trust now control structure and organization so these are basically you know security and privacy controls described in the publication have a well known organizational and structure for ease of use in security and privacy controls section and specification process controls are organized into 20 families so there are a total of 20 families in this particular uh standard each family contains controls that are related to specific topic of the family so there are 20 families okay in 20 families each family let's say family number 1 are related to specific topic of the family two character identifier by you uniquely identify each control family so there the, the, there are you know ids identifier uniquely uh that is that is there in these uh, controls control families right. such as if you can see that there is ac for access control at for awareness and training au for audit and accountability families of controls contain base controls and control enhancement which are directly related to their base controls control enhance enhancement either add functionality or specificity to a base control or increase the risk strength of the base control okay so uh, basically what what they wanted to say is that control enhancement what the, what the, what does control enhancement mean so control enhancement is either you know uh, either kind of adding any functionality to that particular control or maybe specificity to a base control or increase the strength of the base control right where we are increasing this increasing the you know kind of the strength the control enhancement are so now families are in alphabetical order so these are all related to the family and the controls how, how they are uh, you know placed in this particular document Uh, now this is a control identifier. This is a control name, audit storage capacity. So they they have given some some examples of uh, so so that you can understand the uh, the document uh, more efficiently. Base control. This is the base control in the control allocate what records storage capacity to a home date. So and and then. okay so the, these are the base controls right you have to implement the base control and then we have control enhancement in so control enhancement is basically where we are you know giving some power to that particular control okay you know increasing the strength of that particular control so, so the example is very uh, you know clear here also that allocate audit record capacity storage capacity to accommodate so we should allocate audit record storage capacity 
auditor record storage capacity is what where the storage of that particular auditor records can be you know uh, the, the organization should have the capacity to store it right it can be through hard drives it can be through you know multiple the you know big dockers or you know or you know having a uh, having a server right 